Hey guys, it's me, John. I am uh, one of Night Dive Studios environment artists working on System Shock, and it is awesome to be here with you. Currently it is, what, the 23rd at 9 p.m. exactly here in Orlando, and I've got a treat for you guys. I have been busting my butt this entire week trying to get this monster of a map <clears throat> mostly finished up with some minor spots that need to be done, and getting there, definitely getting there. Um, did a couple of tweaks to enable the fog to actually work this time around. Um, most notably being that I turned off all of the RGB lighting, so it's only just blue or red or green, or just varying shades. It's not pure white anymore. <clears throat> Looks way, way better. The music probably doesn't fit the atmosphere, but I don't care. I like it, and it works for me. Uh, a lot of these <clears throat> particles and whatnot that you're seeing already are, are things we've already you know built in the past. But, man, they look so cool in this thing. I mean, I never thought that the original game could look this neat. So, I'm really liking where this is going. And I can't wait, you know, to have you guys sit here and watch how it, how it progresses over time. Uh, one, of the, <clears throat> one of the major changes you're going to see that I've made, I have completely gutted the area that has the growth. I hated it. I'm trying to avoid using this orange texture whenever possible. I think it makes more sense to tie it in with the particular aesthetic of the actual growths. And it just, I don't know, makes more sense to me. So that's what I'm going to stick with. That's that's my story. Um, I think I still have the... You know what? I must have closed the game. So let me pull the game up. <clears throat> Showing it off side by side is always a pretty cool comparison. I was actually going to start building out this door that's broken beyond repair up in Beta Quad, but I don't want to do that just yet. If I move any of the, the pieces of the map tonight, all of the lighting that I built is going to go away and it's going to look horrible. So, uh, But yeah, judge for yourselves. What do you think looks better? This or this? I think this looks better, but I'm a little biased, so feel free to chime in. And as far as uh, Third's question goes, is there a reason why we added fog? Well. The reason why we do anything, really, is that it looks cool. I mean, come on, it looks awesome. And especially being able to just kind of grab it and make it as moody or as not moody as I desire, it's pretty sweet. So, yeah, I think the uh, the Grove just makes more sense. And I even went as far as to take the engineering uh, ceiling lamp and put it in here just because it matches the actual tone of the walls. If I'd use anything else, it would look kind of goofy. So... Um, a couple other things I did too is I changed the armory. Uh, where is the armory? Where's the game at? There it is. So the armory uh, is kind of an interesting little orange hell. <laughs> Let's get this stuff out of the way so we can see it a bit clearer. Uh, I don't like this. And one of the first things I did was change it. Now, if you guys know this game as well as I do, and I hope you do because you're here watching, one of the textures on level 6 in the dorm areas uh, towards the CPU node that you have to go to. <coughs> or nodes, rather. It's because there's four of them. Yeah, I think there's four. No, I'm actually, I think it's just two. Uh, anyway, that's irrelevant. There's a wall panel in there that I don't... I can't actually get access to right now because I haven't gotten that far. Uh, but it's called a tech rack, and it looks like an armory. Like, a wall-mounted uh, place to place guns, I suppose. So I've actually replaced this area and made it look more like what I would think an armory would look like while still keeping the color scheme of the original. It's a little dark in here. Uh, I may go back and change it, but you can see what I've done with the tech rack where I've actually put the gun racks on the wall so that you can come in here at some point. And maybe you'll even find the guns in the wall to grab and, and pull and use rather than just having them be in boxes on the floor. Uh, so, <clears throat> as I said, I'm just trying to make it as consistent as I can. Uh, Whenever I can take the chance to kind of figure out what they were trying to do and, and improve on it, I always do. Uh, even if it is in... I'm trying to find its comment. Uh, Draco Star's comment, uh, Blasphemy. It definitely is a little bit of uh, Blasphemy, but you know what? I think it's good Blasphemy. So we're going to go with it. Uh, Pipe World, too. Uh, the area that you saw in the Unity demo. I have uh, pretty much finished that off today. That was a much of a pain in the ass as you could imagine it being. Um, I'm really, really liking the, the contrast between the maintenance areas and the 
uh, medical areas. Just the difference between the blue lighting and the orange lighting. I think it just, it's a classic sci-fi style, right? Like blue and orange is a huge thing, especially in film. Uh, it just works really well and it kind of adds to that cinematic feel that you're going to have in the game. Uh, and I do know that there's a green spot here. It's something to do with one of these reflection captures going crazy. Actually, it might go away if I rebuild them, so let's see what happens. Not betting on it, though. It's been a trouble spot for the past two days, and I have yet to figure out why it turns green there. Actually, before it was purple, so... Alright, well, it's just giving me the middle finger, so we'll just, you know, ignore it for now. Um, so yeah, I, I've tried to bring this little corridor to life a little bit more. Um, it's got pretty much the same texture as it did in the original, except I've taken out the, the medical lighting that was in here. Um, if you go to this spot outside of the armory and walk down Pipe World here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, why am I getting stuck in this corridor? It's like I randomly just got too fat to walk through it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, you got these fluorescent lights here, and we could possibly put them back, but why the hell would you put fluorescent lights next to these incandescent lights? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I took it out and I just made it all incandescent, so it's got a nice orange glow to it now. I try to tie in that theme of the rest of the station that I've, I've worked on so far, where the maintenance areas have a very specific look and feel, rather than just being a mishmash of random textures. Um, but yeah, and you know, I've got a little cheap star field here just for the illusion of depth. Eventually I'm sure we'll have something out that you can look out the window. Probably a texture material that allows you to see space outside of it with the stars actually having some sort of depth effect that keeps it from looking flat like it does currently. Because I can go right up to this and you can look at it and you can see that it's just a couple of squares moving by. But it works for now. Um, if you keep going through here, you'll see that the area with the um, radioactive waste storage has actually been adjusted as well. Um, kind of got rid of the weird lighting that was in there too. Let me. Gosh, gosh, I hate that spot. It won't let me in for some reason. Um, so I've gotten rid of the orange texture, and I got rid of these weird strips of lights, and turned it into this. So it looks more like an access port. Um, when we get the original barrels put in, I'm actually going to set it up so that... I may even try to like do a pixel art rendition of the original barrels and just kind of make a 3D object and then paint in the pixels with the exact same style as the original sprite. Because if you walk up to these... Actually, I think I blew them up, so you can't actually see them. But if you walk up to them, as you go down below, like you look down, the, the barrel actually does this. So you're looking at it and it just flops. It looks like it's just... It's a flat plane that faces your camera no matter what you do. It's... <laughs> I wish I hadn't destroyed it, you would have gotten a kick out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's that area. Uh, that came together pretty well. Uh, where am I at here? It's this way I have to go. Uh, you can kind of see uh, the entrance to the, uh, the Borg cube back here. And I say the Borg cube uh, because if you go to the area I'm talking about, and you look back here, you can kind of see that there's system functions and whatnot in, in the background. But, when you get into Alpha Quad, there's a very specific area that is so totally Star Trek inspired, like, it couldn't be anything else, just the way it's designed. It looks like a whole set of Borg alcoves, for those of you who actually watch Star Trek, and I'm getting fat and getting stuck again. Um, let me go run over there and I'll show you. One of the things I want to do is see if there's a way to potentially work with the existing textures to make kind of an alcove texture. Uh, if you've seen First Contact, the film in, from 96, uh, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, yeah, I'm almost there. Oh, come on, don't tell me it's locked. Hold on, let me pop some drugs and run super fast. Please. Ugh. Thank you. Okay, I'm too far away from that. Alright, now I can go. I got this set on the easiest setting, so... I could have sworn I saved it with Alpha Squad's access already open, but apparently not. Come on, let me through. Okay, so over here, once we get past the uh, cyborg area, here we are. So this is totally, like, 
at their attempt at making a board cube interior. I mean, look at this. You got the. They even look like Jean Luc Picard when he got assimilated in uh, the best of both worlds. I mean, just look at that. It's totally him. <laughs> I, I love how campy it is. Uh, but yeah, you go down this other set of hallways here, and then you see these little access gauges, and that's the closest they could come to making an alcove for these guys to regenerate in. So. I'm gonna see what I can do to spruce this up a little bit. I know in our remake we're gonna try to make it look kind of like an alcove, so don't want to spend too much time in here. Uh, the focus of this particular stream is going to be on getting the upper area done, the little walkway with Darcy's office. <clears throat> Which is interesting because Darcy actually has two offices, um, for those of you guys who didn't know. Uh, you get an email, I think it's from Rebecca, it tells you that there's Darcy's office is, yeah, right there, right? But he's got an office on level two as well. So this area right here is what I want to flesh out. Uh, I'm going to avoid doing the broken door for now, but I will work on that later. So let's go ahead and get this set up and moving. Actually, I'm in the, the Borg area. Ooh, gotta get out of here. That area when I was a kid, when I first played this game, spooked the hell out of me, man. Like it's it's amazing like how creepy this game was to me when I was like eight. Now that I'm playing it and I show people, I'm like, yeah, this game used to scare me, and everybody gets a kick out of it. But when you're a kid, like stuff like that tends to be kind of uh, your brain's not fully developed, so you're not really seeing it for what it actually is, and you're you're filling in the blanks with your head, and your imagination's very, very vivid. So, yeah. Nope, it's a goofy looking game to me now, but it's still a good game, and I love it. Now, oddly enough, this, this whole area is just, like, tile. So I don't know if I want to really improve on that or just leave it alone. I think it works for this upper area, but we'll see. Alright. I've also been going through the material list that I made and actually making them flat squares that you can actually see a bit easier instead of these round ones. Uh, just makes it easier to pick them off at a glance. I just need to upgrade to uh, a nice pair of Sony headphones rather than these earbuds that I've got. So this whole area is uh, lit up with these fluorescent lights, which looks so weird. Like, they start off, like, white in the center and turn blue toward the outside. Uh, I guess there's only some ways, or a few different ways you can actually light up stuff given 1994, but I could actually do it like this, where the texture is already set, but that is way too bright. And it also takes away a bit of the agency I'd have in determining how bright these areas are going to be. So... Oh, you know what? I didn't do the floor either. Whoops. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, Carly is not here. Her internet is crazy right now. Um, something to do with California's wildfires, I imagine. Uh, yeah. It's funny, because when I was out in San Francisco in March, like, it was raining so much when I was there. And now that I'm gone, it stops. It's like, oof. I haven't really dealt too much with wildfires being in Florida. Uh, we get rain like non-stop at times depending on uh, time of the year uh, summer you can pretty much set your uh, your clock to the uh, time it's gonna rain it's almost always around two o'clock sometimes four but yeah it's it's pretty it's so normal here in summer because we have I may have already mentioned it before but we have a very unique weather system here in where the uh, sea breeze of the Gulf of Mexico and the sea breeze of the Atlantic Ocean collide directly over Orlando, where I live. And it always results in some massive thunderstorms. Like, some of them it can even produce tornadoes. So it's, uh, it's neat to watch. Not so much to be, uh, you know, in, but it's neat to watch. I love the way these corridors look with these, these lights in there. Uh, and especially with them, I'm, I'm trying to take, I may have mentioned it before, but I'm taking kind of some inspiration from the way Chris designed his tiles, uh, where he's got three fluorescent light tubes in here. So I'm just using the same lighting setup for the uh, 
light actors in Unreal. Just to kind of maintain consistency between our new version and the old version. Now I'll do my best to keep on chat as much as I can, but unfortunately I do need to work. But you guys have been in enough streams to know that I don't shut up, so... Yeah, I want to adjust this. I have to fix it, but if I fix it, it's going to destroy all the, the light maps down here. Because if I... Watch, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So keep an eye on this area right here, right? The way this looks right now. Now when I go back up here, and I fix this so that this wall piece matches up right here, what ends up happening is, if we go down, I show you guys, oh, look at this cool area that I just finished, and all the lights are turned off except for the dynamic ones. So everything is dead and dark. But if I undo, it all comes back. So that is one of the problems of working with binary space partition maps, is that you lose all your light maps whenever you adjust anything. So for the time being, I'm going to have to just deal with what I've got. I was going to try to brighten this up a bit more and add some other cool stuff to do it, but I can't even put the, uh, the tile panel piece up there either because this entire piece is connected to the back there. So, sorry about that. But at least you get to see what, the, what this part looks like. I personally love the way this texture looks with some actual emissiveness to it. Uh, and if you guys haven't, can't see it in the stream, it actually is flickering. I do have them set up to do that to try to emulate, again, what Chris has done with the, uh, the remake work. I just want to keep internal consistency between the two different, or not even two different projects, just the two different projects, like the original remaster and the remake. Um, I mean, because I would classify what I'm doing right now as being pretty much a literal remastering of the maps, uh, not so much of the, uh, the game, just the maps themselves. Okay, so this room probably has clinical paneling. Yep, just clinical paneling everywhere. So, uh, for those of you guys who've played the game enough to know that there is a, you know, that, that door right here is busted and you can't go through it, I'll show you what's on the other side if you're curious. Just a second, let me fix these textures up real quick. There we go. And this needs to be changed to the round ceiling lights. complete the work in here, I need to go back and actually grab the lights I already made for that. Okay, let's see where we at. Let's delta. I want to go to beta. Beta should be right up yep, right there. Okay, so most of these lights are busted like four or five are actually on, so I'm going to try to emulate that. At some point I'll make a pass and actually put the damage textures in, but it's just such a pain in the butt right now to keep doing it over and over. Just for efficiency's sake, I'm just doing the bare minimum to get the textures up to spec, and then any of the damage variants can come later. And I can tell what's going to be damaged and what's not just based on what actually has a light bulb underneath it for the uh, light actor. So when it comes time to replace the uh, the healthy versions of these lights, it's a simple matter of just seeing which one has light bulbs and which one doesn't. And as far as Deep Chrome's comment, I like the circle lamps more of that retro, like a 60s dropped in the 90s kind of thing. Yeah, it, it actually does, it fits this room, and it fits a lot of the areas with this particular aesthetic. Uh, I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, I like it more that it's been cleaned up and it doesn't have the lighting built into it. Uh, I actually did that earlier too with... Uh, I was mentioning in chat, in the NDS chat if you guys were watching. Um, here's the original texture for the halogen lights. And here's the version that works with physically based rendering. So if you want to see how that looks in engine real quick while I'm already here, I'll give you an idea. I can just figure out where I put it. There it is. But with the, uh, the lighting, removed from the texture, it works really well. You can actually get a sense of the, um, the depth of the wires and whatnot. But watch what happens when I save this over itself with the original. You'll see a huge 
well, hopefully you'll see a huge difference. Okay, so I gotta re-import this, right? Keep an eye on the ball here. See how different that looks? Doesn't really look anywhere near as good. And it's all kind of like random as to whether or not it actually looks correct. And it always has that, that light look to it, no matter what. But when I go back to flattening it out and re-import what I've already got. So much more that reads like an actual material rather than a monstrosity, I guess is the best way to put it. It didn't look very good before, I don't think. So, but that's that's part of the, the, the reason why these lights no longer have uh, lights built into them. Um, like lighting was built into it before and now it doesn't it doesn't have that anymore and it really uh, really like adds a lot to it and allows it, the texture itself to shine through rather than what was painted into it um, that's half of the work that I have to do is going back to these old textures and fixing them uh, it takes a long time to do but the end result generally seems to be worth it so I'm pretty happy with that okay so that's the same texture as the wall Except not that part. And I just fat fingered it so it moved the piece and I have to undo. Oh, I wish Unreal would stop that. If they come out with an up if Epic, Epic would come out with an update that kept you from fat fingering when you when you like clicked just too the wrong way, I would love them forever, more than I already do. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this room's pretty much done. I I've kind of given up on putting doors in. Um, I'm gonna end up putting in like animated doors at some point in the future, and it just seems kind of silly to put in doors that are just gonna block the light. So for the time being, I'm just gonna leave them open, and it's easier for people when they do the playthrough as well to see what's going on and where to go next. Okay, so this area is three different environmental regulators. Put the textures off. finish lighting this area up. Now the rest of the lighting in here is pretty consistent, except for this. I think what they were trying to do was demonstrate like that this part had been damaged, but they don't have a light that's like that for this. So they just put that in there to just be like, hey, this, this light got torn apart. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid doing that. I think having it turned off is a little bit more effective and convincing rather than having it be replaced with a completely different texture entirely. Oh, auto save. In regards to the environmental settings being optimal, let's actually see what it says. Oh, no, no, it says standard temperature settings. Nice try. It's not always optimal, it depends on the texture you're looking at. So this area is now almost done. Let's go back to the original. You can kind of compare and contrast. Unfortunately I don't have a human skull that I can, you know, put here, but you can really see what these, these corridors were supposed to look like back in 94, if they had the ability to use colored lighting. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff, really finally getting to see what they look like, or what they were supposed to look like. That's an interesting light. Unlike most of the lights on the station that flickered when damaged, this is just pulsating on and off. Uh, for those of you who know anything about fluorescent light bulbs, which is what these are, uh, they don't do that. Uh, fluorescent lights are either on or off, and even when they're on, they're either on or off, because uh, if you're like me, you actually get a headache from fluorescent lighting because it's constantly flickering, even when you, you can't visibly see it, but your brain can see it as it's processing visual data from your eyes, and it will give you an eye strain headache if you're susceptible to it, and I am. Uh, in fact, 
I, for the longest time, could only sit in front of the old style cathode ray TVs, like the ones pretty much everybody had from the 90s until the early 2000s. Uh, just because CRTs in their, uh, the way they scan the screen, like if you'd ever watch like a newscast and you'd see uh, in the background the TVs that they have and you'd see the, the, them slowly like moving down, like a, like a bar moving down the screen, that's the cathode ray like scanning the screen and, and uh, the camera is like, faster than the, the screen is at replacing the image. So you're seeing that artifact. Unfortunately, your, your eyes also see it too if you're susceptible to that kind of thing. And I would get monster migraine headaches from that. Like, I remember playing Metroid Prime at my then girlfriend's house, who's my, my wife now. And I played Metroid Prime probably for like six hours. And by the time I was done, I had to like lay down and go to bed because my eyes were hurting so bad and it, it felt like I had like a, somebody had like installed like a jackhammer behind my right eye and just kept it like pounding nonstop. It's, it's pretty mean stuff. Uh, Advil wouldn't fix it, uh, Tylenol wouldn't fix it, like nothing fixed it. Just going to bed and not hearing or seeing anything fixed it. Uh, I can't fix that wall yet. I'm very happy that I have uh, everything in my house now is like LCD never run into that problem ever again. Uh, and for those of you wondering, this is because LCDs actually have a constant screen, uh, at least as far as your eyes are concerned. So it prevents you from getting eye strain headaches, which is just awesome because I hate it so much. Alright, let's sell this wall. Actually, that's almost accurate. That's, that's close enough. I don't want to mess with the, the light mapping, so I'm going to go back and fix this stuff later on. But I do need to grab a couple of lights from the starting room. There we go. I need these right here. I think it's funny that I, I just, I know where I'm at like pretty much all the time and I can almost always just move in one or two directions and just kind of figure out exactly where I'm going. If, that, if that's a sure sign that I haven't played this game more times and is like healthy for a person, that, that <laughs> I don't know what is. Uh, so, for those of you wondering too, light map resolution determines how big the, the light maps are in terms of uh, file size. So, what you're seeing right now are light maps, right? Because this is set to a light map resolution of 4, when it should be 1, it's uh, a little blurry, and up close it looks kind of fake. If it's set to 1, like these are right here, it looks significantly better. I'd like to go even further, maybe like 0.5 just to sharpen them up a bit more. But you're not gonna really like get that close to them in most cases. Uh, this one's another example of four as well. It looks a little gross. Uh, this one should, yeah, it's also four. I thought I set all of them to one that had the lights on them. Like these right here should, yeah, these are, those are totally one. You can tell just by looking at them up close. But they, they have, they carry the, the, the light information, right? Cause I set these lights up to be tubes. So that they emulate being fluorescent tubes and it shows up in the light map and it just it ends up looking way better than just like a couple of spheres uh, because the default light is a sphere in Unreal. Uh, it takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to do what I'm doing. It's not much and it's not really particularly special but it just it needs to be done otherwise it doesn't look right. Uh, and I forgot to put the medical icon on there too. There's so much stuff to do on these maps and it takes so long to work on them. Oops, I fell down. Fun fact too, if you hop on one of these elevators, as it's going down, you can make it go all the way back up before it's touched the ground, as long as you hop in the right spot. I'm going to actually put the flickering lights in there, but I'm going to do it correctly. Because I don't think that fluorescent tubes pulsate. 
At least they don't when I make them. Actually, these tubes might be a little too long. Maybe not. Okay, so these are both damaged. So what we'll do is set their attenuation radius down to 200 so that they don't shoot off as far. And then since they're now sta uh, stationary lights, I can actually apply the light function materials to them to make them flicker. And I've already got a couple I've made. And I'm going to change this one so it's not exactly the same. And there we go. A little bit of damage lighting goes a long way to make some of these rooms a little bit more believable. So, next step. You can go a little further and even add some of the fog in here too, just to kind of tie it together with the, the aesthetic we've been developing. bit of stuff added to it just right maybe maybe an extra bit of particles too you know what we need some dust in here as well probably can't yeah you can probably see it up in the stream it is 1080p just a little bit of dust in there let's see and this actually did have the lighting on top of it Let's try to break up the monotony of these lights just a little bit. Make them a little brighter right here. That way it doesn't look identical on every single spot. Alright. I really want to work on this area with the door, but alas, I cannot without destroying the light maps. And I don't want to do that because there's so many cool areas of the station I haven't finished yet. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I also did a little bit of work on the, uh, what do you call it, the little hidden area, which is right here. So I've tied all this together to be a bit more consistent with the rest of the maintenance areas. Because it's totally a maintenance area. Once it starts having this, like one of these access stations in it, I just call it a maintenance area and just texture it so, as so, or as such rather. Uh, I need to get in here and fix this. Actually, I can just throw in one of the ladder textures for now. There it is. I need to move the BSP over so I can actually put an access station there. That's one of the things I forgot. So many different pieces to keep track of in here. The fog needs to not be right here. So I'm actually going to delete this. Because I don't want it showing through the ground below here. Although I do want a little bit of uh, damage to these pipes, though. So what I'll do is... Sure about it. There it is. A little bit of steam coming out of these fluid transport pipes. I want it to kind of shoot in your face as you walk by. And since it's doing that, I don't know why it's actually getting... It's getting lit by a, the, the lights from above. It's kind of funny. I would think it would be getting hit by these orange lights, but apparently not. And that little fog sphere right here. To kind of make it look like that uh, steam jet is filling this area up a little bit. There you go. Kind of adds just a little bit more believability to this area. Auto bombs. This is the goofiest things in this game. I think I think it was Deep Room that mentioned that having a pair of those red eyes staring at you in like a dark corridor, knowing it's going to explode when it catches up to you, is probably pretty terrifying. Gotta say I'm with her on that. Oh, look at that! That light map looks awful. Oof. Interesting. How did that even happen? It's all preview lighting, so it tends to either work or it doesn't. Um, when it's on production mode, it should actually light up significantly better. Here's the uh, the room with the cyberjack, by the way. I haven't really done much of anything to change this room. It's basically identical to the original. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything is where it should be, except this 
like these, the inner pieces of this wall up here used to be lights. I just made these top ones really powerful instead. I just think it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, I haven't actually done this room yet, so maybe I should do that. And since this is pretty much an armory as well, this is actually the first place when you find the Magpulse gun. Um, let's throw some tech racks in here and see what it looks like. And then put in some maintenance style lighting. And we'll grab some maintenance lights. It should be right here in this hidden wall. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys what's behind the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, that door that you can't actually open. I'll do that in just a sec. I can't actually get into the room, but I'll show you what's behind it in terms of the map. You may actually be surprised. I had no idea what it was when I first saw it. Or not that I didn't have an idea of what it was, but rather I had no idea that it was going to be that particular area of the map. So, and then this needs to be industrial tile or the stuff. There we go. We make these end caps here or something else. An access station, perhaps. I guess that works. It works pretty well. Now if you go into this room, uh, I don't know, I think, yeah, I don't know. if you go into that room, you'll, I think, hopefully you'll agree with what I just did is probably an improvement. Because it, again, it's just this. Hey, another stamina stamina. Those are always great to have. But yeah, this versus this. I think this is a bit more aesthetic. Um, works better, ties in better. I kind of wish I had a Magpulse gun. I would hang it up on this rack right here. Hey, third player, why don't you spoil what's behind it for us as I work my way over there? I'm waiting on him to say something. I see you in chat. Come on. Tell him what's behind this door. <laughs> I'm waiting on you, sir. I can't go any further until you tell them, because you know what's there. Or maybe I'll just beat you to the punch. He may actually know the very specifics of what's there. Um, yeah, nothing. That's actually pretty accurate. Uh, to be more specific, though, it's more than just nothing. It is actually... Um, it's the radioactive trench. So, if you look over here, I've actually got it marked on the map right here. So this area right here is where that little spot with the, the dot. That's the radioactive trench. Or not the trench, but the, the door that's busted. The trench is ac accessed from the back here. I need to go this way anyway. Um, but yeah, as we get closer to the trench, which itself makes absolutely no sense, but I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, you notice we're right behind the area with, like we're literally right next to that, or what would be a room right there. So if you go back in here and then you go in, you can see there's nothing up or down here from the BSP that Daniel made. But if I go down here, you can see where we just were. If you can kind of tell what this is just based on the, like this is where I'm standing currently right here. So if I walk over here, there we are. So that's what's there. I just, I had to know, because I was getting ready to make it, and I wanted to just have an idea of what it could possibly be. And I'm also physically limited by what I can put in, right? Because if you look right here, there's only like one square of room in this particular spot. Plus there's all this empty space, so I could actually fill it out to there. We'll see. I really don't believe in doors broken beyond repair. If you have the ability to throw one of these guys or the Earthshaker mines, I'm pretty sure you can open up a damn door that's been busted. <laughs> I mean, the Earthshaker's designed to mine moonscapes. So give, give me a break here. 
Um, so, that being said, I was going to tell you guys something, but I forgot what it was. Oh well. Back into this particular area. This is the, or what I affectionately refer to as the morgue. Um, I believe it was, if, if you look at the logs, I believe this is where you find one of uh, Karenna Ozark's logs talking about how Keith and the mutants went down the Axos Corridor. The, yep, there she is right there. And they're all dead. Uh, they got, they got doo-dooed on pretty hard, man. I mean, these guys didn't even stand a chance. They got like one broken gun, uh, two broken guns, a uh, surgical cart, three broken guns, and somebody forgot about the gas grenade sitting behind this desk, which would have been a total help to them if they had actually managed to find it in time. Um, real shame there. Oh, check it out. The camera sticks to the wall. <laughs> and you can't even hit it. Uh, I literally cannot hit this camera. Oh, well, that works. At least the Magpulse takes it out. So I've already textured this room, so I actually, or at least most of it, so I need to go grab those lights that I'd put up in Beta Quad. And... There we go. Where am I at currently? That's Group 1 access, medical icon... Ah. I know where I'm at. Just need to keep going a little bit more to the right. There we are. Did I, did I miss? I did miss some lights in here. Oh well. I'll get them in a sec. There we go. I hope you guys are having fun. This is tons of fun to do. I really look forward to, to spending the time to uh, show off the work that I'm working on. Um, it's definitely more fun to do this on stream than it is to work on this with no one around. Um, not because I don't enjoy the work, but because it gets a little bit monotonous after a while. Because um, essentially I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but knowing that you guys really like this work and how it's making the old game really come back to life, I mean, it, it really makes it all worth it. Um, so, I mean, this is, again, this is something I really look forward to doing. And it's it's just really cool to sit here and, and chat and bullshit with you guys while I kind of make this old game have a bit of fresh life to it again. Yeah, and as far as, uh, like, Trekkie26 brings up a good point where he says, I never understood why they have a radioactive trench and it doesn't even have railings. <laughs> That's an OSHA violation for, for sure. Uh, maybe there's a radiation leak or something as it makes no sense for them to have a station with random radiation hazards. You're, you're right. And really what we're doing with that particular room with the remake is we're going to turn that into a uh, the power station charging area. Like the, the actual the power stations themselves are going to be... Uh, like the power cells that fill them are going to come from that particular area, uh, and at least on this particular map. And there may be a mission where you have to actually go down there and grab them, and you know repair the uh, like a busted power station if you want to use one. Uh, so if you look at Rob's concepts, I don't have it up with me right now, but you would actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it just it looks like the same room, it just makes more logical sense. Like, it's no longer just a pure OSHA hazard to just be like, hey, guys, I <laughs> hope you like radiation, because that's what you get when you work here. Uh, more that it has a logical reason for being where it is and for why it exists. And that's really, like, one of the things that I try to just implement into everything that I do. I, I overthink some of the stuff that I'm doing, because it's, it's a little cartoony in some cases, and sometimes it's not. But I'm trying to bring a sense of like realism to this game like not in the sense that I want it to be realistic looking but rather realistic in the sense that this place is a living breathing world inside of the game and we want it to look and feel real uh, in, in the context of where it exists because if it doesn't then it it really just shatters the illusion of what it is and it stops being 
um, it stops being part of the game world and it just kind of becomes a distraction, right? And when when you don't feel like you're part of the world that you're you're playing in, then you're really kind of you're not really enjoying it the way that I think you should. Uh, just speaking as a game designer and a game artist, I think that uh, like making this place feel real is just as important as any other consideration that we put into it. Um, so it's it's definitely something I think about a lot when I work on these rooms and just think about why the room exists, why the room has been made, and if I can improve on the room, then I will. And if what I'm going to do is going to detract from it, then I don't see a reason to do it. Um, that said, I mean, I, I'm happy with like 99% of this game. Like, with what I'm remaking, I really don't even touch most of the rooms. I just make them one-to-one -one with what they were. It's only a couple side rooms here and there that I actually fix or change. Or, I mean, because if you look at the storage, there was the, the room uh, with the, the repulsor puzzle where I basically just took the lights off the walls and put them in the ceiling instead. <laughs> That's just kind of an example of what I'm talking about. But uh, as far as uh, that particular, like the, the radiation room up here, the trench, uh, I do think it doesn't make any sense whatsoever that they, like, because there's a log in here where uh, Abe Gearin talks about how they were able to set up a radioactive trench and they put these floor tiles in that emit radiation. Now, to me, that's just the craziest thing, that you would have floor tiles that emit radiation, much less, like, store them. Like, maybe you would store them, I guess, so that you could, like, ward off an invasion by Tetracorp or something. But, realistically speaking, nobody's dumb enough to set up a radioactive trench, especially when nobody has environmental suits, because, again, if you look at the logs, and I'm enough of a nerd to know this off the top of my head, Shodan issued a general recall of all Enviro suits, and even the basic environmental suit, the one I'm wearing currently, doesn't even protect against radiation damage. You have to have the upgraded V2 or V3. So essentially, all this does is protect you against Beta Grove. So it's not much help to to have an environmental suit in this particular area, and really, it's not much help to begin with to even put the stupid thing up because. The mutants don't seem to be affected by the radiation. Hell, you can I could run back in that room and there's probably one running around on top of the radiation tile as, as I speak. Uh, I'm not going to right now, but you get what I'm saying. It's just, like, the, the radiation doesn't actually affect anything but you, so that's kind of what detracts from the believability of the world, where it's like, you're just being handicapped for no good reason other than technology didn't allow them to really screw with the, the, the game as much as they screw with you. So, and that's, that's another thing I want to do, too. I, I want to really see if we can push Shodan to be even more sinister. Like, I want to have it set up to where, like, you do certain actions. Like, maybe once you've, um, once you've done something that really pisses her off, like, she discovers, oh, you, you've set up all of the, uh, all of the conversion chambers and turn them back into healing units. Guess what? I went ahead and just had my cyborgs go while you were messing around and flip them back. So when you die, you get <laughs> if you didn't go up and check to make sure they were flipped back where they were, you just become a cyborg again. <laughs> stuff like that, where it, it, she's a bit more menacing because she actually thinks and doesn't just let you do stuff to her. Uh, I mean, because she has an incredible will to live, right? I mean, she goes as far as to separate the station at the end of the game to try to make sure that you, like, stay on board and die, and she doesn't. Uh, just stuff like that. I just, I feel like we could do a lot more with her, make her a bit more menacing. So... That's my thoughts on that. It's really cool seeing you guys chat, though. And yes, spoilers for a 20-year-old game, don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're in here, you've probably already, you know enough about the game to have a good idea of what happened in it, so. Of course, if you played Shock 2, you even know what happened anyway, so. I mean, Shodan literally tells you what happened. Okay, I think I'm going to change this room to this office from this orange stuff over to the 
maybe the floor and tile ceiling. I'm not entirely sure. Let me play with it just a little bit more. I'm getting pretty close to this, this map being done. I'd say I'm about 75% through it right now. Once I'm done with this area and I connect to the, the fortress on Alpha Quad with the Borg stuff, uh, I'll be in really good shape at that point. I'll put these lights on the wall too because why not? It actually works in this area, I think. Just a little bit of extra accent lighting. Like I said, I'm trying to keep up to date with chat as much as I can, but my primary focus here, in addition to talking, is getting this area done ASAP. So I apologize if I miss any comments. I will double check here in just a few moments. I'm only going to be on for another 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes. Got some previous engagements. But I like to keep these short and sweet and informative. I think you guys appreciate that. Sometimes streams, depending on the stream, can go a little over. I like to keep it short and sweet. You guys get an idea of what goes on in our heads, why we do things the way we do, um, and hopefully, you know, come away from this feeling like we care, because ultimately we do. Um, everything we're doing is for you guys, just to make sure you're happy. I need to fix those lights. I actually need to separate that environmental regulator from these lights over here. But. Can't do that until, you know what, screw it. I've already done enough to this map. I need to, actually, what? That's already separated. Sweet. That needs to be a regulator. There it is. And this needs to be moved. I've already destroyed the light maps anyway with some of the stuff I did earlier, so... You guys have seen everything you needed to see from those other rooms, so it's no big deal if I come in here and destroy this and rebuild it. As far as eyeballing... Yeah, I'm actually eyeballing the light placements. I've, I've done it enough to know exactly where they need to go. I'm most of working on a grid, so it's pretty hard to mess them up. Uh, in terms of texturing, however, I don't eyeball that whatsoever. Uh, I have correct physical values kind of stored in my head from how many times I've done this kind of stuff. So I get everything pretty much where it needs to be. It's a point of pride for me to make sure this stuff looks as good as it possibly can. So if I miss anything or mess it up, I always go back and fix it, so don't worry. But yeah, Unreal does have a snap feature in here. Actually, if you ever see me go up here and change this, it's because I'm changing the snap size from 1 to 5. So I'm always uh, snap to a grid. Just makes life easier. Save real quick, just in case this thing crashes, because it's been known to do that. I don't trust Unreal when it comes to undo for BSP objects after that one time. I'm really liking where this is going. It's coming together quite well. It's starting to look very much like the original, but again, with the the way it was supposed to look. And that is really my ultimate goal here, is to make this look as good as it can with the intention of the original design. And maybe not always the intention, but at least the spirit. Uh, like the armory change I made, um, I think just 
it's one of those things I just think makes sense, so I'm sticking with it. But if we decide later on to overrule that, I don't, I'm not really married to the idea of the stuff that have changed, I just like the way it looks. So what you see may not be what you get in the end, just keep that in mind. I love how a third player is like, yeah, the, the biggest spoiler for System Shock 2 is the fact that Shodan's face is in the box. <laughs> I never really thought about that. It makes sense. I guess, you know, she would actually be there. Unless it's just like her malevolent ghost watching over you. Alright. I don't really even know what this area is supposed to be. It doesn't make any sense in the context of the game. It's just kind of this random energy conduits slash communication ports slash soft paneling all over the place. I'm assuming it was supposed to be something that had been uh, like messed with by the cyborgs to kind of remodel, but I'm not really sure, to be honest. So, oh, fun fact, the Magpulse kills enemies even if they're, uh, even if it's ineffective and when you have the uh, combat rating set to zero. So. All right, this room's gonna be a giant pain in the butt to work on. Um, all these different pieces and components that go everywhere. Oof, there's no way in hell I'm gonna get this done while you guys are watching, but I'll get as much as I can done in the next five, 10 minutes, and then we'll open up to you know comments and whatnot like usual. And hopefully you guys will have some other cool stuff to look forward to. Comports here, interestingly. I don't think Althea actually mentions what this area is. Um, when you when you look at Abe Garen's log that he left behind, he talks about how the resistance set up like that area over here, but. By now, it's like overrun with mutants and cyborgs, so it wasn't really much of a defense for them. I think this area is something we can do a lot with uh, in the remake really kind of just push it a bit more and make it look less like a random assortment of parts. Especially if we put in some like good damage to these walls and whatnot. And it'd be really sweet, kind of push it a bit further, make it more believable with the damaged area rather than just random tiles all over the place. I, I, I would assume that, that what they were trying to do is like with these energy conduits being exposed that there's been heavy fighting here. Uh, it makes the most sense to me when you think about it, because there's debris all over the place, too. Uh, but again, 94 is just horrible at demonstrating this stuff. So, like, you kind of just have to fill in the blanks with your imagination. Surprisingly, the energy conduits look perfect, even though they've been in the middle of all this fighting. That said... I, I still love the energy conduits, though. They're like one of my favorite textures in this game, especially with the emissiveness that I set up on them. How they just glow in the dark like that. I had them setting or set up to emit light as well. Uh, so, like, because they're so intense, they actually will fill the room a little bit with a red light. Just kind of adds a bit of ominousness to it. I know there's a tile there, but can't really be arsed to fix it right now. Oof, yeah, that's going to be a, a lot of fun to... You know what? Actually, I, I'm going to have to fix it, because to do what I want to do correctly, I need to do that anyway. So, let's set that up real quick.
And uh, as far as Kane Kun's question goes, is this scene blocking exactly the ones that the other guy made? That would be Daniel. And uh, yes, this is actually the uh, textured block out that Daniel developed. So I'm just uh, going through Daniel's work and essentially bringing it to life. Uh, taking the, the framework that he started and working with it. Oof, this is getting slower and slower as I work. I think there's just too many objects. I'm gonna save just in case. Oh. oh I, Unreal randomly does this. Like, I'm, I'm actually just right-clicking and I'm flying off the map. If I hit escape, it'll let me... Okay, there it goes. Now it's letting me work. <laughs> this engine's crazy. I don't know why it does what it does sometimes. Okay, this is not perfectly snapped yet. There's a little bit of an overlap. I'm getting much, pretty much wrapped up here. I've done most of what I wanted to do tonight, um, but you guys are welcome to ask any final questions. I'm going to wrap it up and get going here in a minute. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions or concerns or comments, feel free to message. I'll respond to whatever I'm allowed to respond to. Uh, we're pretty open, so as long as you don't ask me anything crazy, I should be able to get your response. Uh, if you ask me what the release date it is, however, I do not know, and I will tell you uh, best guess is something like 2020. And that's the total ballpark figure. I mean, do not quote me on that, because it is completely subject to change. It may or may not happen. So, like I said, final final comments and, and questions, go for it. In the meantime, it has been a total pleasure having you guys on again, as usual. Um, I'm hoping by the next stream, this whole area will finally be done. I really don't want to work on medical, and I'm not looking forward to working on systems engineering because it's going to be as bad as this is. Uh, but we will see shortly. Because I have to figure out what map I'm going to work on next after this one. As I get closer and closer to the end game. Because once I go through this corridor here and get this area done, and then go through here, and go all the way through here, I'm pretty much almost in Shodan's crib in this area. And go down here, and that's where the CPU nodes are. So when, the, when this is all done, level 1 is pretty much finished. So, uh, either the stream died or nobody has any questions. So, oh, there we go. We, we do have some, but, or no questions, just comments. So, uh, yeah, looks like you guys are pretty much wrapped up. I'm pretty much all done. Unfortunately, all the light maps got destroyed, so <laughs> what I can show now is pretty much dead. But... Oh, here's a question. So third player wants to know, what's the plans for the placeholders for buttons and panels? Will we use original panel art or our own assets? I'm pretty sure we're going to go with the original stuff when possible. Uh, it just makes the most sense to just reuse what exists rather than making new stuff or trying to shoehorn the, the new aesthetic into the old one. Not that it doesn't fit, it's all made by Rob, but um, it just makes more sense to keep the original stuff when possible. So that all works. Um, like I said, it's awesome having you guys here. I'm going to be back, I think, at the end of the month. It should be the 31st. So uh, let me actually check the streaming schedule real quick. Because I'm pretty sure it's the end of the month that I come back. And it actually would be the 30th, not the 31st. So I'll be back in, on the 30th. And hopefully this map will be long gone and you guys can actually see the final walkthrough on it. Um, I'll make sure to rebuild all the lighting and stuff too so you get like the, the awesome cinematic experience rather than the all the light maps are busted and everything's totally dark experience, which is what you're getting right now. <laughs> which is why I waited till the end to actually mess with the VSP, because I knew what would happen, as I mentioned. So, um, And how the fog works, okay, I'll, I'll tell you that one last thing too. It's actually a particle emitter, and it's using what's called volumetric fog in Unreal Engine. And it's if you're looking at my side screen here in the content browser, it's under our particle effects folder. And I simply just drag and drop the floor fog right into the scene and I can move it up or down at will. And I can make it large or small, uh, really do whatever I want with it. I can make it cover the whole map if I felt like it, or just specific areas. Um, even just a small little bit of it, uh, it works pretty well too. Like if I want a little cloud kind of like 
hovering here. That can also work. So it's, it's just really a, a variation of volumetric fog, and it just requires the volumetric fog to function. So that's, that's pretty much how it works. Um, if you want to know more about it, just look up uh, Unreal 4 volumetric fog, and you'll get the uh, epic info on it, and they'll just tell you everything you ever want to know uh, in, in much more depth than I'm able to articulate. So, all right, uh, I'm heading out. It was awesome having you guys. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.